This week on House of David, Rabbi Gennady teaches us on the importance of trusting in God's power. We learn from the example of Joshua what it really means to be strong and courageous and trust what God has promised to us He will give. But we must learn to keep the faith and not let the enemy win. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Gennady Lifshitz. Let's go into, well, I have a couple of things today. But I believe, first of all, we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. Boldness and the power of God. Listen, this is what it says here. Moses is dead the great leader, and then Joshua took over. And God said to Joshua, before they even moved into a promised land, he didn't speak about the law. He didn't speak about repeating things, what God repeated to Israelites. He didn't speak about anything, what he has said in the past. But here's what God said to him. In verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, and the land which I am given to them. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses. Verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with, Mo with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. All right, let's stop here for a moment. Let me tell you something, my friends. What we've been taught when we were little. And we were taught by our family, friends, by our parents, different things. Your parents probably wanted for you to be the best. And they taught you maybe something that they were wishing in your life. But God has something greater. God is changing things for you because He is your Heavenly Father, not earthly, and He knows best what you're fitting into. Because your parents, they made you, but God has created you. It's a different thing. Amen. God has created you. And it doesn't matter how, how good and how much of the goodness uh, your parents wanted to install into your life. God is always, God always has greater things for you. Much greater things for you. Amen. And he said in verse 5, listen to this, it says, No man shall be able to stand before you. So your parents, maybe they were wishing for you the best and this and that, but they, they would say just to be a more precaution, to be more careful, avoid certain things. Don't go that route. All we can see with our natural eyes is just 20, 20. 20 miles that way. And maybe 20 miles this way. But God has the universe. He sees much greater. I cannot say that the parents, they were against you, but the parents, while well, they could see all they could give. But God gives you all that he can see. Amen? Amen. And that is much greater and maybe your parents would, would teach you when you were little, be careful doing that, be careful doing this, don't take risks, 
don't go that way, don't do these things. But when you come to God, God says you can do all things through Christ. Who strengthen you. And you say, what? I've been taught to be careful. I've been taught to be aware of things. I've been taught that I have limitations. I've been taught just to use wisdom. My human wisdom. And God says this is limited. But I have better things for you. And he said to Joshua, he says, listen to me, Joshua. Maybe your parents told you to avoid certain people, certain circumstances, certain things. But I'm going to tell you, Joshua, that no man shall be able to stand before you. I'm going to tell you, Joshua, that you will be more than conqueror. All, not just now, but all the days of your life. Would you like that? All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, and you saw what I have done, I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. Joshua even seen Moses, being Moses' disciple, still did not understand the fullness what God has for him. Amen. You may be a disciple of one person or another, of one ministry or another, but what you can see is only what God is doing through that man or through that ministry, but maybe God has much greater for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, you are the only person who can limit yourself. Amen. You are the only person who can limit yourself. But when you listen to what God says, God says, listen to me. Look upon Jesus. He is the author, not your parents. But he is your creator. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Dream big things with me. And as big as you can dream, you can have an even greater because I give more to a dreamer. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither it's perceived into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Our precious dear sister, she's over 80 years old. She was deaf from being six, seven years old. And she just got healed last month. Can you imagine? She was deaf. In one ear, from being six or seven years old. The devil is a liar. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. Give a clap offering to God. Amen. And God kept her alive till today. And I hear what I hear is God gradually healing her from head to toe. Isn't God good? The power of God. God says, all I want you to do, listen to me, listen to me carefully. Listen to this. So that was the promise that was given to Joshua and to you and I. Revival is coming. Why do you think we build in this place? Why do you think God is building this place? Why do you think this is all changed? Because I believe you're going to have a revival here. Because I believe that God is going to move in and do marvelous things out of this place. Amen? I believe it. We don't build things for nothing. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Because with God, there's no limits. 
Hallelujah. And God said, I will be, no man shall uh, be able to stand before you. Get this. You know, anything you've ch f are facing a challenge, a wall, you come into a, a point in your life, you're facing a wall. You said, God said to me, no man, no wall, nothing shall be able to stand before me. You know what God said to Zerubbabel? Speak grace to that wall, mount. Because nothing shall be able to stand before me. And this is not just a preaching. This is something that you need to live. Amen. Amen. So when you come in against an obstacle, you remember what God said. No man or wall or government or sickness or disease, nothing shall stand before me if they are on our way. Because God wants me to move on. Hallelujah. And have the victory. Not just once. Not just twice. All the days of your life. All the days of your life. All the days of your life, sister. Hallelujah. Get it. It's by the power of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And then God says in next verse, as he has promised what is going to happen to Joshua, he says, be strong. No fear in perfect love of God. I know you're facing the devil right now. His ugly face is everywhere. He's trying to come. To kill, to steal, to destroy. He's trying to, to bring any kind of destruction. But this is why I'm here. This is why we are here. To encourage each other. To speak to your life. What God has spoken to me. My wife, she was asking me last night. I was laying on my bed. And we were watching this and that. And we were, she was reading a book. And I was watching a Christian television. She, says, she turned to me and says, do you have a message for tomorrow? And I turned to her and I said, yep. Of course, I had no idea what I'm going to be speaking. But the reason I said that is because God never runs out of messages. Amen? Amen. Amen. God never runs out of messages. The good news is always there. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I was going to say, do you want a bad news or a good news? <laughs> God never runs out of messages. He always knows what to speak to his people and what to bring into their midst in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you that the demons right now, they're flying right, left and right because they hate it. They can't stand in the presence of God. Amen. So God said to Joshua, be strong. Be encouraged. How many of you ever have received a miracle in your life? Raise your hand. Look at those hands. Look at those hands. Yes, you got a big miracle, sister. Look at those hands. Look at those hands. Hallelujah. Look at the Satan. Look at these hands. Hallelujah. And how many more that will come yet? Hallelujah. How many more will come yet, brother? Amen. Miracle after miracle. We are going to win. Hallelujah. Because God, God, God promised. Amen. And miracles are coming. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. Only be strong and of good courage. Not just be encouraged, but of good courage. Solid courage. Be encouraged all the time. How? Look at the scripture above. No man shall stand before you all the days of your life. If God would promise you just once to win, you would say, hey, I'll be a winner once in my life and I'm waiting upon this. And even though, even to be once a winner, it is also good. But when God says all the days of your life, Ho, oh, oh. all the days of your life. It's not once. It has to be every day. 
all the days of your till you are going to see my face. Blessed Jesus, I thank you for that wonderful gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No losers here. All the days of your life. And God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The devil is a liar. Glory to God. That's why when we look into the word of God, we say, God says, no man shall be able. You see, they'll try. It doesn't say that no man shall be, but shall be able as to different things. Some people will try. The circumstances will try. The devil will try. Your flesh will try. Everything will try, but not being able. Amen. Not being able. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong and of good courage. Good, good courage. Amen. Be in the presence of God. Believe for the power of God. Can I encourage you? Don't be religious. Just be anointed. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks the yoke. Yes. Let the Holy Spirit be your best friend in your life. Hallelujah. The power of God, the dynamis. Hallelujah. Soto Koreala And you should pray in tongues more than you pray in your own tongue. So that the Spirit of God will have liberty to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Be of good courage for these people. You shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Wow. I'm so glad God has brought us to Montreal. In 1997, we came from Edmonton. Huh? And I thought, well, it's not about the beauty of Montreal, and it's not about because this is probably one of the best cities in, in Canada. Oh, it's not about that. But God says, when I move you there, I've given you the land. I'm giving you the land. And when we came here, I remember my wife prophetically received from the Lord. Remember, dear? From Joshua chapter 6. God says, I am giving you the city. Which way, Lord? Will I become a mayor? No. No, it's revival. It's revival. It's revival. Montreal is the interesting city. People from all over the world are here. Every nation God brought here. You know that nothing happens b without the permission of God. And God has chosen Montreal to be a city a pot, a city where everybody is accepted. Amen. And that is a wonderful thing. Amen. Precious Jesus, because God is getting ready. So that is good Amen. to have our sisters from Philippines, to have people from every country in the world. There's a second largest Jewish community in Montreal. Amen. First is in Toronto, but second is in Montreal. Quebec, get ready. You don't even know what God has chosen for this place. The Lord is 
worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We praise your holy name, Jesus. your holy name, my Lord. Glory to Jesus. Praise your holy name. 
to you, Lord God. We glorify your name. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom. of David, Rabbi Gennady teaches us on the importance of trusting in God's power. We learn from the example of Joshua what it really means to be strong and courageous and trust what God has promised to us he will give. But we must learn to keep the faith and not let the enemy win. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Gennady Lifshitz. Revival will change everything Amen. in Montreal. Amen. Montreal 
Mount Royal will be God's mount. It's a royal mount. Amen. It's the mount of God. <laughs> Don't you want everything to be belong to God? Would it be wonderful? You got to believe in his power. You got to believe in the power of God. Be strong and of good courage for these people of Quebec. You shall divide as an inheritance to the land which I swore to their fathers. God is going to win this place for himself. Well, the devil thought that he is going to have a, a, a heyday around here. No. You know, his time is always limited. God kicks him around the way he wants. From one place to another. He is not the boss. He is a dog on the leash. Amen? So let us trust Jesus. Jesus is Lord of all nations. He paid the price for Quebecers. He paid the price for all. He paid the price for sinners. He has the power. He and every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The Jew first, and then all the rest. <laughs> God said, be strong and of good courage. I will divide this land for them. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do all that I have said in this book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we never could imagine the way God is going to bring his truth. And I want to show that to you how. Let's go to the book of Acts now. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Well, if Jesus said they heard from him, it means they did. And I know where they did. In John chapter 14, 15, and 16, it's about the Spirit of God is going to come. Amen. Well, they heard, but did they understand? No. No. They could never, they would never imagine what Jesus was talking about. Amen. Amen. So because they could not imagine what Jesus was talking about. In verse 6 it says, Therefore when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, listen what they were questioning, what they were questioning, what kind of question they had. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? <laughs> and he said to them, it is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But he says, here is you. you. You don't understand what is going to happen to you. You don't understand the way we're going to change the kingdom. You don't understand that I'm not talking about the last days when I'm going to come back and do everything at once. You don't understand that I have a job to do to defeat the devil. And that work is going to be through you. You don't understand this now. But I have a mandate for 2,000 years yet to have a good fight of faith and to bring my gospel into the world and to change every city and to give every nation and every tongue an opportunity to be saved. Yes, she says, I could have bring my kingdom now and fix everything in Israel and give them victory, but how about the world? 
how about the nations? And here's what I'm going to do. Peter, Jesus said. You don't worry about the times when they're going to be, when the end time will come. It'll come. But here he says, but you, verse 8, shall receive power. <gasps> power? Me? For what? Do I need power? I thought you are going to heaven for a week and come back and that's it. Everything is done. Jesus says, no. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I told you in John chapter 14. But it doesn't mean I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm coming back in 2,000 years. 2,000 years, Lord. 2,000 years. But within this time, you shall receive power. For this time, you shall receive power. Power. So it's not about me and my kingdom to come and settle things, but it's about you. It's about me anointing you, and through you I will defeat every enemy. Amen. It's by my spirit, it's by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And every sickness you. Peter, you can, uh, cannot imagine you, what you're going to see with your own eyes. Jesus, what is it that I didn't see yet? I saw you healing the sick. I saw you delivering people from demons. I saw you raising people from the dead. What else should I see that I didn't see? Oh, Peter, you saw everything, but you didn't see it through yourself. You saw me doing that. But don't you remember, Peter, what I said, that greater things you shall do that I've done? Greater? What is it? It's when you shall receive power. And you will preach the gospel in Jerusalem. I will preach the gospel in Jerusalem. Lord, they're going to kill me. But Peter... Do you remember what I said to Joshua? No man shall stand before you, shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. You shall receive power. Glory to God. But Peter says, when, Lord? When shall I receive power? He says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When the Holy Spirit will come upon me, I shall receive power. Hmm. I wonder what is it? Then Jesus said, you know what he said? He said to him, go to Jerusalem and wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Okay. God has promised to Peter. You shall not receive, as, as Jesus said to him, you shall not leave Jerusalem. Until you shall receive power. Go and wait. Listen to me. Listen to me. Peter, knowing Jesus very well, with his limitations of his understanding, and others, they obeyed him. And they went, and they were waiting. They were waiting. They were waiting. And it says in chapter 2, 
when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Did they know that it's going to happen in the day of Pentecost? I don't think so. But the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come. So when God has promised to Peter and others, you shall not depart from Jerusalem, but go and wait until the power of God will come upon you, is speaking something to the church. Lord, revival. God says, yes, but you shall not depart from the place where you are. You shall not depart from the faith, believe in me for revival. You shall not depart from that idea. You shall not depart from anywhere, but wait until the power of revival shall come upon you. You see what I mean? And many people today in the church, they ask, him, Lord, what is the power of the revival? I thought we're doing well. He says, your eyes are fixed on something else. Don't worry, he says, Peter's eyes were fixed on Israel, on the kingdom to come in Israel. Your eyes are fixed right now on attendance in your church, on finances. Lord, we need your kingdom to come and touch our church. It's not what Jesus says. Your mind says, what you need in your church, what you need in your life is the revival. Amen. You're fixing our eyes as Peter were fixing, and his eyes were, Lord, when are you going to bring all the things that you have promised? At that time, you're going to restore everything to me? Jesus says, listen, all I want to do right now is for you to believe and wait. Because at the certain ten, day, at a certain time, at the certain day and at the certain time, you shall receive the Spirit of God that will bring revival into your midst. And you shall receive power to preach in Montreal, in Quebec province, and then to the end of the world. It's going to go and go and go. This is what we need to understand. And the Bible says that at the certain day that they didn't know, but the Bible declares that it was the day of Pentecost. And it says that they were together waiting in one accord, believing what Jesus said. Here's the point. To believe and to stand and to expect. And you know what? The Bible says, when they were in one place, believing for what Jesus has said, not even understanding exactly what's going to happen to them, suddenly there came a loud, a sound from heaven. This is what I believe is going to happen here. Because I believe, I trust God. He has promised a revival. He says, no man shall stand before you. Be strong, be of good courage. Without my powers, nothing can be done. And suddenly, the Bible says, there came a sound from heaven as a Russian mighty wind, and they all were filled. The whole house were filled with power, and they were all filled with the Spirit of God. And the revival has started. And then for Peter, has, there was no more questions. He understood exactly what God meant. And the question that he asked previously was no more in his mind. That was settled. He knew 
what God wants to do for him right now. And what God is expecting out of him. And what God is giving him. And what God is telling him to wait upon. And the passion that Jesus gave to Peter changed his life. He was not looking so much ahead as 2,000 years ahead, but he was looking for now. Lord, the power and the spirit, the glory, people being saved. Hallelujah. This is what it is. Praise be to God. And I know that this is what God wants us to have, that mighty, powerful revival. And it's not our will it's his will it was not just it was not Peter's will it was Jesus's will he says you shall receive power you shall receive revival you shall see my glory you shall see my victory hallelujah we're not just building a church we build in a church upon the rock who is Jesus. Yes. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. You shall receive power. Expectation is the greatest thing you can ever have. Where God said to Joshua, be bold and be strong. Be good courage. Yes. Nothing shall stand against you. I will anoint you. And I will open every door. And I will speak to everything. And they will obey me to do what you need. Amen. 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 It's not for your sake, but for my sake. And Hallelujah. God is going to be glorified. Yes. God is going to be glorified through sinners being saved. Hallelujah. Through your families coming back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Through our healing and deliverance. Amen. God is going to be glorified. When his power is going to sweep this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to be glorified. I ask for nothing else when I saw this message. When I saw this way long time ago, I quit asking of God about anything really because everything else is beside the point. The Bible says all these things will be given unto you. Amen. But I begin to ask of God for one thing. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your spirit, Pour out your spirit. I may ask for my family. I may ask for my neighbors. I may ask for myself. Praying and praying and believing. And receiving. But when God moves. It's all done. Thank you Jesus. All that is within me. Bless your holy name. I live my life to worship you alone. You brought me out of darkness into your glorious light. Forever I will sing of your great love. Forever I will sing of your great love. Love. I love to see you glorified, to see you lifted high. I earn to see the nations bow the hill. It's you alone, Lord Jesus, who can cause the goddess heart. Find your love and everlasting peace. To find your love and everlasting 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the time has finally come ah, the rapture hallelujah for your bride to take her place hallelujah and we'll hear the angels sing hallelujah oh,
We're longing for you, Lord. We're longing for you, Jesus. We're longing for you. We're thirsty and hungry for you, Lord God. We're longing for you coming. We need revival, my Lord. We need revival, Jesus, in our lives, in our cities, in our countries. We need revival, my Lord. We need your Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit in this place. Hallelujah. The trumpet will sound. The heavens will know that the time has finally come. <laughs> For your bride to take your place and we in the agency House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.